Hi, this is Kevin from SoyaChinchow.com. The first quarter of 2019 was indeed an exciting time for mid-range smartphone hunters. We saw smartphone manufacturers like Samsung and Huawei join the mid-range with highly competitive devices that are right up there with mid-range powerhouses like Xiaomi. With so many phones launching, it might be hard for you to consider what to buy. But that's why I'm here. I'm here to break down these phones for you so you can select what is right for you and what's not. I'll be breaking down the budget guide into four categories, each with its specific purposes. If you want to skip into a particular category that you're interested in, you can always refer to the timestamp in the video description. We'll only be looking at some of the newer devices that were released in the past quarter. This is not to say that the Pocophone F1 and the Zenfone Max Pro M2 are not good devices, but we're here to focus on the newer devices that have appeared in the market. So, with that out of the way, let's start with everybody's favourite. Gaming. For the best gaming experience, you'll probably want smooth performance, followed by a good display and a decent sound system. For some, you might even appreciate a headphone jack because you don't have to bring along a dongle when you want to play games with a headphone. So, what are the specs that you have to look for in a gaming smartphone? I would say a good CPU, a decent GPU, good battery life and probably a good looking display. Based on this, I would recommend the Samsung Galaxy A50. I chose this as my go-to gaming phone because it provides decent specs for its price. Starting with its display, it uses a Super AMOLED panel rather than an LCD, which provides great contrast. In its core, it's powered by Samsung's very own Exynos 9610 processor that's mated to 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. But if you want more, you can always add a microSD card. In the battery department, it is powered by a 4000mAh battery cell, which is pretty big. And what's more, the headphone jack is there which is good news. So, the Samsung Galaxy A50 is offered at 1199 ringgit, which is a pretty good deal considering the specs offered. For productivity, you will probably want a smooth and snappy smartphone that you can work with and a durable battery cell that lasts you for an entire day. And for that, I would recommend phones like the Redmi Note 7 and once again, the Samsung Galaxy A50. Both of these devices get very good processors, which the A50 has the Exynos 9610 processor and the Redmi Note 7 has the Snapdragon 660 processor. What's more, the Samsung Galaxy A50 comes with 6GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage, while the top spec Redmi Note 7 comes with 4GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. If you feel that the 2GB difference in terms of RAM is important for you, do consider the A50. But do take note that the Samsung Galaxy A50 is priced at 1199 ringgit, while the top spec Redmi Note 7 is priced at 949 ringgit. If you're on a tight budget, the Redmi Note 7 will do just fine. In this segment, I'd like to mention about the Samsung Galaxy M20. Although the M20 only comes with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage with its Exynos 7904 processor, it comes with a 5000 mAh battery, which is really big. What's more, the M20 is only priced at 799 ringgit, which is much more affordable than the A50. For photography, you shouldn't expect flagship level performance, but there are some decent mid-range devices that pack good cameras, such as the Vivo V15 or the Oppo F11 Pro. As Oppo and Vivo are famous for their selfie cameras, the V15 and the Oppo F11 Pro are no exception. For the V15, it comes with a 32 megapixel pop up selfie camera, while the Oppo F11 Pro comes with a 16 megapixel pop up selfie camera. On the rear, the Vivo V15 gets a 12 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Although it doesn't get the 48 megapixel main camera like the V15 Pro does, it is still a worthy contender in the mid range market. As for the Oppo F11 Pro, you get a 48 megapixel main sensor together with a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Although the 48 megapixel sensor on the F11 Pro sounds really impressive, but in reality it works quite differently. You see, the 48 megapixel sensor on the F11 Pro uses a quad Bayer array, which combines four adjacent pixels into one pixel, resulting in a 12 megapixel image output. I personally tried both of these devices and I found some major differences between them. Well, first of all, the F11 Pro tends to capture very bright images compared to the V15 under the same conditions in default settings. In dark conditions, the F11 Pro has a dedicated nightscape mode, which allows you to capture great images in low light. So, if you're a person who likes taking pictures at night, I would think that the F11 Pro would be the better device for you. Another thing that puts me in favour of the V15 is that the V15 gets 128GB of internal storage while the Oppo F11 Pro only gets 64. 
which is rather disappointing given the fact that the F11 Pro is priced at $1,299 and the V15 is only priced at $1,399 which is only a hundred ringgit difference. If you really want the extra storage, the V15 is the better choice. But don't worry just yet because both devices support micro SD card. Now for the ultimate entry level smartphone. We still have the Honor 8C, the Realme 3 and the Redmi 7 which are all priced below 600 ringgit. These three devices come with a 3 gb plus 32 gb variant for 599 ringgit. But if you want a more affordable version, the Redmi 7 has a 2 gb plus 16 gb version that you can get for 499 ringgit. But if you have more to spare, you can always get a Realme 3 with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage for 699 ringgit. But for that price point, you can also consider the Redmi Note 7 bottom spec, which is priced at 679 ringgit. As for the camera, all three of these devices have similar characteristics, with a dual camera setup and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. While the 8C and Realme 3 has a 30 megapixel f1.8 main camera, the Redmi 7 only has a 12 megapixel f2.2 main camera. From the front, the Honor 8C and the Redmi 7 houses a 8 megapixel selfie camera, while the Realme 3 houses a 13 megapixel selfie camera. All in all, I would say that you won't go wrong with either one of these devices, but for me, I would choose the one with the best deals or the one that is on discount. Overall, the budget and mid range smartphones that have came out in the past quarter were pretty decent. But if I were to choose one, I would choose the Samsung Galaxy A50. The Samsung Galaxy A50 itself offers a complete package which it has decent RAM, decent storage, a good camera, decent battery life and all of that for 1199 ringgit. However, if that's out of your budget and you want something around 1000 ringgit or less, you can consider the Redmi Note 7. The Redmi Note 7 comes with 3 spec variants. The lower spec variant comes with 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage, is priced at 679 ringgit. The middle spec one comes with 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage, is priced at 799 ringgit. While the top spec variant with 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of internal storage, is priced at 949 ringgit. The 4 gig plus 64 gig variant, which is quite similar to what you can see from the Samsung Galaxy A30 and the Samsung Galaxy M20, is actually priced the same. 799. But if I was given a choice, I would choose the Redmi Note 7 over the Samsung Galaxy A30 and M20. Simply because the Snapdragon 660 processor in the Redmi Note 7 outclasses the Exynos 7904 processor which you can find in the Samsung Galaxy A30 and M20. So these are the devices that I would get personally. So do you have other devices in mind? Do let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell icon so that you'll be informed whenever we post a new video. Do check out our latest video here and another random video here. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!